Welcome everyone to our November board meeting. Today is November 21st, 2019. The Norwood City School District Board of Education follows a bi-monthly meeting schedule. The first meeting of the month is called our committee meeting. At this meeting, we discuss fully our agenda for the board meeting to be held the third Thursday of each month. As board members, we encourage you to attend, watch, and listen to our committee discussion resulting in action at the board meetings. For full disclosure, our committee meetings and board meetings are always announced, video and audio tapes, as well as posted to our webpage for your view. All of our meetings are public and visitors are welcome. Mrs. Camphouse, will you please call the roll? Mrs. Rosa? Present. Mr. Atwood? Present. Mrs. Fallon? Present. Mrs. Cole? Present. Mrs. Raven? Present. Would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item 1.04 is the adoption of this evening's agenda. I'll motion to adopt the agenda. I'll second. Mrs. Worsley? Yes. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Ms. Adler? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Mrs. Raver? Yes. 1.05 are the minutes from our regular meeting on October 17th, 2019. I get a motion to approve the meeting minutes as written. I'll motion. I'll second. Mrs. Worser? Yes. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Mrs. Fallon? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Mrs. Raymond? Yes. Item 1.06 are the minutes from the committee meeting on December. I'm sorry, we're not there yet, are we? November 12th, 2019. Did I get a motion to approve these minutes? I'll motion. I'll second. Mrs. Orza? Yes. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Mrs. Fallon? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Mrs. Ray? Yes. And with that, we'll move into um, item two, which are presentations, which is what everyone is here for, so welcome. And we'll begin with citizenship recognition, recognition with Mrs. Akers, the Norwood High School principal. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We've booby trapped that side of the stage. <laughs> okay, do we have this pretty good? All right. I just want to make sure we have it. It's underneath the laptop. Okay. <laughs> there it is. It's hiding. If you don't mind, I'm going to put it right here first. Okay, good evening. It is with great pride that I have the opportunity to introduce to you one of my seniors, Damari Rogers. Could you come up front? Where is he? And he's here yet. He's running late. Okay, he must be running late. Um, do you want me to skip and see if he shows up and then we'll come back? Okay, you're going to hear from me in a few minutes. <laughs> All right, Mr. Gabbard, you're up. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> so every um, month starting you know, here in the next couple months and then the next few months, each building presents and they have uh, the teachers come with a couple of their students to kind of demonstrate something really cool and neat that they're doing. So uh, I'm going to introduce our library aide for Williams Avenue Elementary, uh, Lisa Lawson, and she'll introduce our students and talk to you about the new program we have, Destiny Discovery. Good evening, my name is Lisa Jens Lawson. I am the library aide at Williams Avenue. Just a little bit of information about the Destiny Discover. What is Destiny Discover? Destiny Discover is, it provides one discovery interface for students and educators to search and access all your print and digital resources, including ebooks, audiobooks, and interactive books, as well as free and paid subscriptions to our program. What can you do on Destiny Discover? Search books and other materials that are located in our building libraries. Students and staff can sign in to a place books on hold 
in our libraries. They can, the students and staff can sign in to place the books on hold from their classrooms or at home. They can leave reviews, find their, view their finds. So can the adults. The parents can also log in and search for the students. Books that they have out say that the students haven't brought their books home. They've left them at school or they've brought them home. They've left them. The parents need to search for the books. They can also check out ebooks. Um, we at the, the primary schools do not have ebooks, but the high school does. They can access learning links that are added by our building librarians. How can you access Destiny Discover? Through any web browser via destinydiscover.com. Select your state and your school information. The free Destiny Discover app is absolutely free. This is what it looks like when you log on to the Destiny Discover. It brings up all of the books that we have access to in our libraries. Each individual library is different. If we have books in our school, which is Williams, view is completely different. There are some schools that um, have the same books. If Williams has a book that, say, Sharksburg does not have and they want to borrow it, all that they need to do is log into this and they can borrow it. This is what the sidebar looks like, the Destiny Discover. You have the student's profile, you can check out, you can add holds, you can check the finds, as well as add favorites. What do the students think? This is Rebecca. She is going to let you know. <laughs> and I'll tell you all, Rebecca was not nervous. <laughs> Absolutely not. I like Destiny Discover because I can see if a book is in or out. I can also put a book on hold. Yes, I can see where it's placed in the library. These are reasons why I like Destiny Discover. I also have another friend who are my helpers in my library <laughs> on a daily basis. Each and every moment that they have free, they are in my library helping me. My name is Leslie Johanna. I'm in sixth grade, and I use Destiny Discover to look for books in the library. And I also put books on hold. I can see if a book is in or out, and I can remember to show. This is why I like Destiny Discover. This is a second grade student. Tell me why you like the Destiny Discover program. I like it because I like Destiny because you can find books you want to see are in the library on it. Okay. Tell me a little bit about it, how you use it. I use it to find the books that I'm interested in and see if there are the ones in that series that I like. <coughs> They can also tell if the book is on their level. It tells the Lexile level and the grade level in which they are reading within. Like, what it's supposed to be about. And those are the 
Any questions? Becca and Riley? These are two young ladies that spend a lot of time in the library when they are finished with their classes and their subjects. Riley? I am Riley and I go to Williams Avenue Elementary and I work in the library daily with Miss Lawson and Rebecca Canada. <laughs> well, the way we first got into this program was we were in, during our fifth grade year we were working with Miss Crouch and the fourth graders when we were finished with our classes because Miss Lawson wasn't at our school yet. But then our librarian, she went to a different school and so we needed a fill-in library and Miss Lawson came from the middle school. And she didn't know her way around the thing. And so... <laughs> the primary. Yes. And so we helped her through it and we've learned how to do so much in the library. It's really a cool experience. So, so. we started doing Destiny together. Yes. I taught them how to do Destiny. And <laughs> it's been such a treat that they now, go ahead. Miss Lawson gave Riley and I the privilege to assist her in the library. We have the ability to check students in and out. We also get to make displays for each of the seasons. We get to read to the little kids, the grades pre-K to third grade. And we also basically have the ability to do everything except log on to her computer. <laughs> <laughs> we can't do that, but it's okay. This gives me the experience for my future so I can exceed in college and my future. <laughs> I really like this because it gives me knowledge that I wouldn't learn in any other normal class. It just, it's been such an honor to do it with Miss Lawson. And we're learning yes. lots yes. with our own technology. Yes. Thank you. Okay, good evening again. Uh, it is with very uh, great pride that I have the opportunity to introduce one of my seniors, Damari Rogers. Please come down, Damari. <laughs> Damari, you get to stand right in front. <laughs> Today, Damari is being presented with a certificate of citizenship. He has demonstrated what it truly means to show Norwood pride. In October, in October, a former student of mine and a Norwood alumni posted a photograph on social media of a young man wearing a Norwood t-shirt. Her post stated, this young man needs recognition. Damari is his name. He was in my work this afternoon standing next to an elderly lady that I assumed was his grandmother. He asked if we had a phone that he could please use. I was so impressed with how proper and polite he was. I began chatting with him and I found out he was calling home to tell his parents where he was because in fact he did not know this lady. She was out walking. She was confused. She needed some help. So he walked a stranger in because he wanted her to arrive safely. If you, name, if you know Damari or his parents, please let them know that this young man has restored my faith in humanity. What most of you may not know are the other qualities that make Damari a special student. Damari is a third year wrestling participant. This year he is the captain of the wrestling team. Damari is part of Avenues for Success and he tutors students at our elementary schools. He serves as a member of the High School Hope Squad. 
He listens with compassion to other students that may be struggling with symptoms of depression or anxiety. He seeks out ways to provide any kind of help he can. His kind and genuine character allows his peers to trust him and to open up to, to him about their feelings and emotions. Damari has surpassed all expectations in our school building to provide support and hope to his peers. Damari has great aspirations after high school. His dream is to become a Norwood firefighter. Again, serving his community. Congratulations, Damari. I'm so proud of you, and I'm so proud to call you a Norwood Indian. Good evening, my name is Christina Chesson. Our next presentation is also another joyful one. We'd like to recognize our rising stars for the month of November. We're gonna start with Norwood High School. Norwood High School's rising star students, and when I call your name, if you would come down and receive a certificate with, from Mrs. Orza and stay up here, and we're gonna say all sorts of nice things about you, <laughs> and then the board members will shake all of your hands, we'll get lots of great photos, and then you will We'll take a short break and there'll be additional photos that Ms. Havlin will take outside in the lobby. So it's time for pictures. And again, we're gonna start with Norwood High School students. Norwood High School students, rising star students for November are Tara Betcher and Reagan Campbell. If you would come down. Tara Betcher is a junior at Norwood High School. Mr. Rick Robish nominated Tara because she demonstrates outstanding leaderships, leadership in the AP US government and politics class. She has taken on the role of keeping the class checklist up to date and always makes sure the work and handouts are updated for the entire class. She actively participates in classroom discussions and asks meaningful and challenging questions for all. Tara loves learning in general and is excited to challenge herself during her junior year. Her favorite subject is math, and she's looking forward to attending college after graduation in the medical field as a forensic psychiatrist. Students like Tara make Norwood City School District incredible. <laughs> Next, we have Reagan Campbell. She is a fabulous example of a rising star. Mrs. Leslie Hathaway nominated Reagan for her academic performance in the Honors Biology and AP Biology. Reagan has also signed up for two AP courses and many honors courses. She appreciates the challenge. In addition to challenging work, Reagan is also a silhouette, which requires additional practice time and, and devotion outside of school hours. Reagan was also a member of the varsity volleyball team. She is always respectful and she works hard at everything. Mrs. Hathaway said, I have the highest respect for her attitude, maturity, intelligence, and sense of humor. Reagan plans on attending college after graduation, majoring in forensics or another science-based field. Reagan says the best thing about Norwood High School is the great staff and teaching environment. 
students like Reagan make Norwood City School District incredible. <laughs> Norwood Middle School's Rising Star students for November are Madeline Dodson and May Meadow Smith. <laughs> Madeline Dodson is hardworking and a mature young woman. She has demonstrated her desire to do well in eighth grade by asking insightful questions and being conscientious about all of her assignments. She is cooperative with others and she is a role model in the classroom. Madeline has an internal motivation to succeed and she is always eager to do well in class. Her grades prove that she is diligent and willing to study in order to excel. Madeline sets goals and she's looking forward to taking honors and AP courses at the high school. Madeline, thank you for making Norwood Middle School such a wonderful place. You are truly a rising star. Meadow Smith has grown in many ways as a student and a person. She has taken a great deal of responsibility for her grades and is always seeking out ways to do better. More than ever before, Meadow is an active participant in class, asking great questions and volunteering answers. Meadow takes the initiative to do well in all of her classes and doing all she can to be the best student she can be. She has adjusted well to the middle school culture and expectation and has gone above and beyond in all areas. It is students like Meadow that make Norwood City School District incredible. <laughs> Sharpsburg Primary and Elementary Schools Rising Star students are Allison Reynolds and Rosa Garcia Garcia. Allison Reynolds comes to school each day with a smile on her face, ready to learn. She is a great friend to all of her classmates. Allison is a PACS leader in and out of the classroom. She is willing to lend a helping hand to anyone in need. In class, Allison always gives her best effort with a positive attitude. Her favorite subject is writing because she likes to make cards for her family and her teachers. Her goal for second grade is to read more books. She would like to work at the mall when she gets older and hopes one day to visit the North Pole. Allison says her teachers are incredible because they do different things and give lots of tests. We are so lucky to have Allison here at Sharpsburg. Students like Allison make Nord City School District incredible. Rosa Garcia Garcia is a ray of sunshine in her class. She, is all, she always has a positive attitude and is kind to everyone she meets. Rosa is a very good, has a very good work ethic and is an excellent leader in the classroom. Rosa always tries her best each and every day. She is a very sweet, caring girl and a great big sister. Her favorite subject in school is writing and her goal for second grade is to write new stories. Rosa would like to be a dentist when she grows up and visit the beach. Rosa says her teachers are incredible because they help her and they, she thinks they are nice. Her teachers think she is incredible because she gives 110% into everything she does. Keep up the good work, Rosa. We are so proud of you. <laughs> Norwood View Elementary School's Rising Star students for November are Jeanette Liana Sanchez and Maria Abdul. Okay, we're still gonna read it. <laughs> the third grade teachers at Norwood View have chosen Jeanette as their rising November star student. Jeanette has been at Norwood View since kindergarten. She's always willing to help her classmates and the staff at View, and we can count on her smile to light up a room. She maintains a positive attitude under any circumstance, and she is a great academic role model. Her favorite subject in math, and she especially likes to solve multiplication problems. When she is home, she likes to play with her dog, Star, and the third grade teachers feel extremely lucky to have Jeanette in their classes. They know she will continue to work hard and be successful for many years to come. Way to go, Jeanette. <laughs> Maria Abdul is the rising star student for also from Norwood She is an exceptional sixth grader who has a smile on her face and a funny comment that brightens your day. Maria is serious about her school work and she applies herself with grit and determination. She always is willing to assist other students so they can understand the material and is quick to volunteer to help her teachers. Maria's favorite subject is language arts and she loves to read and write. When not in school, she loves to play basketball. She is looking forward to playing for the middle school basketball team next year. 
Maria likes helps make Norwood's view a special place. We expect great things from her in the future, and we're looking forward to hearing about her accomplishments. Students like Maria make Nord City School District incredible. <laughs> Williams Avenue Elementary School's Rising Star students for November are Wes Cannon and Claire Smith. <laughs> Wes Cannon is our fourth grade rising star. He is a fantastic student leader and a role model in the classroom. He holds himself to high standards and consistently puts forth the effort needed to produce quality work. He enjoys learning and is happy to help others. He loves leadership roles and excels in the challenge it brings. His friendly attitude helps build a positive classroom environment. Wes is admired by his peers as well as his teachers. Wes's future plans are to become an architect. It's students like Wes that make Nord City School District incredible. And finally, Claire Smith comes to school each and every day, ready to take on whatever challenge comes her way. Claire is motivated to work hard in all subjects. She is a huge asset to her classroom and peers, as she is willing to help everyone in the class. She has shown to be a great friend and shows her PACS leadership inside and outside of the classroom. She is kind, respectful, and always brings, brings positivity and enthusiasm to school. After school, she likes spending time with her family and friends. It's students like Claire that make Nord City School District incredible. All right, at this time, the board members are going to come shake your hand, and we'll have a photo with all of you. Congratulations to all our Rising Stars. Rising Star students and your families, if you would follow Ms. Havlin out to the lobby, we'd like to take some family pictures and we'll take a short break to allow that to happen. Thank you.
yourself and put it in there. Like, okay. You're not. Okay, we'll move on to item three on the agenda, which is the Education Committee report. Item 3.01 is the 2020-2021 um, school year district calendar. So that is attached, and we did have a chance to look at that and discuss it at the committee meeting. Could I get a motion, please? I have a motion to accept calendar as written. I'll second. supposed to have motions on the next two Sorry. unless oh. they lump them together as 1.1 through 1.3 mrs Warson. i think they're all together so we'll go on to 3.02 okay yep. 3.02 is the appointment of the great oaks representative and as discussed at committee meeting amber ballard will again be appointed as the norwood representative for great oaks Item 3.03 .03 is the approval of field trips. As attached, that would be um, the Norwood High School to NKU. Um, and again, these, uh, as we discussed last time, these dates were post-dated um, as the events have already occurred. So can I get a motion, please, for 3.01 to 3.03? No motion. To approve. I'll, I'll second. <coughs> Mrs. Warson. Hold on. Oh. Discussion. Sorry. Discussion. Yes. So um, I do have one thing I just want to point out and just and just bring up and highlight for everybody. So I've had some time to sit down and think about the Great Oaks appointment. And I still think we should move forward with the appointment that we're going to make, but I just want to make sure that for the next three year appointment cycle, that we do a little bit better job of um, working with what the resolution says. So, and I want to bring everybody's um, attention down to section five. And I just want to read this for the record that says, now therefore be it resolved that the Norwood City School District Board of Education appoints Amber Ballard to the Great Oaks Career Campus Governing Board for a three year term of office commencing on January 1st, 2020 and expires December 31st, 2022. It is agreed between Norwood City Schools Board of Education and the Great Oaks appointee that the appointee will have voting rights on the Great Oaks Board of Education after receiving direction from the Norwood City Schools Board of Education. So what this means to me, and everybody can interpret it the way that they want to interpret it, but this means to me that we should be discussing agenda items on the Great Oaks Board agenda so that we can come to a consensus as a body and say this is the way that this body feels that our voice should be heard on that body through our appointee. Does that make sense? I would be happy to do that. In order to do that more effectively, I need to be able to give my report. Um, and if you would like me to be more detailed about items coming up for votes, I could definitely outline those items for you in future meetings. Perfect. That's happy to do that. <laughs> perfect. That's, that's all I wanted to highlight. Any further discussion? Mrs. Orza? Yes. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Ms. Mrs. Raber? Yes. Moving on to item four is personnel with superintendent recommendations. Mrs. Ronan. Thank you, Madam President. The employment recommendations are around the athletics, the elementary production, also um, spring uh, pupil activity contracts for individuals and some, non, uh, some of our non-certificated coaches and advisors for the school year. And there is one uh, non-renewal for lack of licensure. And that concludes my report. I'd like to make a motion, please. I'll second. Mrs. Orson? Yes. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Mrs. Raber? Yes. Item 4.02 is the NTA 
um, agreement. Can I get a motion, please, to approve the agreement between the Board of Education and the Norwood Teachers Association? I will motion. I'll second. Any discussion? I do have one thing I want to say with regards to this um, to this agreement. So I, I've read over the agreement. Um, I do have um, my spouse works in the district, but she is not in the NTA agreement. So therefore, I will be voting to approve this agreement. Um, I think I think there was a lot of hard work that was done on both sides to come up with a pretty fair agreement. I'm really happy with um, the language that's in there um, and everything moving forward. So I'm in support of this agreement. And I would like to thank you, Mary, for coming in and, and helping to finish out such a, a, I guess, a wonderfully agreeable document for our teachers and staff that benefits them as well as the district. And thank you for your work on it. You're very welcome. Okay, just as a matter before we vote, uh, because my husband is a member of the bargaining union, um, I will not, uh, I will abstain from the vote. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Mrs. Raber? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Atwood? Yes. Mrs. Orza? Abstain. Item 4.03 is um, administration exempt and contracted employees. Um, as we discussed at our committee meeting, um, this has to deal with the cost of living increases that are in the NTA master agreement will also be applied to the aforementioned employees, the exempt administrative and contract employees in the district with a retro to contract start date. I'd like to approve the motion to approve the salary increases. I'll second. Mrs. Orson? Yes. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Mrs. Raber? Yes. Item five is the policy committee report with Brandon Atwood. Thank you, Madam President. Um, it's been a number of months since we've had some policy work to present before the board, and now is that month. So there, we're looking at three, six, eight policies that we're going to be revising. Um, most of these are just general language changes. Uh, we've modified our tobacco use policy to include e-cigarettes and vaping. Um, there is some truancy language that has to be revised uh, because of some, some uh, state changes uh, made up at the Ohio House. Um, one of the biggest things that we are going to be uh, beginning the process through the first reading is going to be our cash balance. And so those following at home or those that want to review this particular policy, um, the way that our district operates currently is that uh, we have a designated uh, cash balance threshold limit of $500,000. And so um, when you're operating a district at a budget level or an annual revenue of about $30 million, you know, if your trigger limit is set at $500,000, that's basically about a month's worth of cash on hand. And so that's pretty scary. So. Uh, what we're doing with this cash balance policy is we're increasing that trigger limit, just that red light that says if we get to a certain limit with our on hand at cash, then that triggers the treasurer and the superintendent to present a plan to this board for how they're going to rectify that for us to make some decisions. So instead of us having that trigger limit set at about a month worth of cash on hand, that's going to be about three months of cash on hand. So, or 10% of our budget. So that's the most important policy that we're gonna be looking at here. And so with that, I'd like to make a motion that we have the first reading for the policies listed in the agenda. I'll second. And I do have oh. discussion. 
I do have a question for you, Brandon. Do any of these policies feature the new equitable language on special needs services? No. Okay. Then that'll probably be a next month item. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mrs. Orza? Yes. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Mrs. Raber? Yes. Item six would be the Buildings and Grounds Committee report um, with Mrs. Cole, but I'll go ahead and read those. Item 6.01 is facility usage. Um, if you look at the attached document, it's for the anointed Church of the Living God overflow parking for funeral services. They had requested the use of North Norwood Playgrounds. And again, this is a post-dated uh, item. But Madam President, they yes. have made another request for this Saturday because unfortunately another uh, Okay. Uh, yeah, Lisa Clem has passed away, and they may need to use the over overflow parking for Saturday for yet another funeral. Okay. Right. Is, is this area in usage typically during these evening time hours at all? No. Is, is no. there a way that we can maybe grant usage for long term for evening hours so that if they have a last minute unfortunate loss in their congregation that we can extend that to them without them having to reach out every, every time. I think the issue there is is that the site is fenced off. Oh, so they need they need a staff member to unlock. That's yeah, the only issue. It's, it's access. Okay. All right. Item six point zero two um, is the student move resolutions. Um, as we discussed last week, um, this pertains to the future movement um, of students and teachers, um, uh, essentially the school buildings when that building is um, under construction. So we did have um, four options for resolution. And Ms. Campos, would you like for me to read each of the resolutions? Or I think we discussed them thoroughly at committee, so I think if you want to just... Um make a motion for the one we want to pass yeah so I'd, okay. I, I would like to make a motion that we only vote on student move resolution a um, and then and then we can discuss that if it's seconded during the discussion phase okay so, so I'm making a motion. a motion to that we only vote on resolution a and then B C and D are then dropped I'll second and let's go ahead and open that up to discussion and kind of vet out what, what that means for everyone is that um, what we would uh, are proposing to do and we'll be voting on is that while Norwood View Elementary and Williams Avenue Elementary are uh, beginning the re renovation process that um, each building would be housed at the middle school for the duration of the school year um, so that the students are kept out of the way of construction they are still kept together as an entire student body and uh, we just feel like it is the safest most cost-effective we were looking at a price point of a um, hundred thousand uh, dollars to to facilitate this move mm -hmm. some of the other resolutions were in the one to two million dollar million dollar plus yeah. range so this was certainly the most financially feasible as well as the um, uh, the most sound given the the uh, challenges that arose at Sharpsburg with the modulars and moving classrooms and um, just all of the moving parts that go into to construction so that that sort of sums up resolution a if anybody has anything to add please or if I've missed something so um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going the elementary building will be utilizing that um, east wing and just the east wing so the third floor space that at one point used to be the music room mm -hmm. um, and a previous life of that building was a functioning cafeteria and so we're going to make that a functioning cafeteria again so that those uh, students in the elementary portion of that building um, will be kept somewhat separate from the rest of the middle school and, and the high school um, we are going to be modifying the, the building grounds to facilitate some sort of playground. So we're going to be adding that function to it. 
Um, and the other thing is, is that this is going to affect the total sixth grade move to the middle school. So for next year, all of VIEW is going to be going. So that'll be K through six that are going to be going. Um, sixth grade at Sharpsburg will stay at Sharpsburg. Sixth grade at Williams will stay at Williams for next year. Um, the following year when we're anticipating um, VIEW being done and then Williams coming over, um, sixth grade at VIEW will then stay at the middle school and then because uh, Williams has a smaller student body base, we can then bring sixth grade from Sharpsburg over and then have that sixth grade move in year number two of that while Williams is in that building. So those are the big movement changes. And I think Superintendent Ronan, I think you have some comments to make about uh, some of the stuff that we're gonna be doing coming up for showcasing what those rooms could possibly look like. Yes, we will set up several classrooms so parents can tour. In fact, we will try to get them set up for tomorrow night because I do know we will have uh, parents in the building. Also, before the holiday um, celebration, we will have uh, the principals will be here and they will be in the hallways to show and tour through that east wing so parents can see what the classrooms are going to be like they're going to see the separate cafeteria the separate gym and how it's a whole separate wing and uh, with model classrooms for parents to view also we are sending a letter home uh, to the parents explaining all of this in detail and inviting the parents uh, to the tours Any other items? Mrs. Orza? Yes. Okay. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Um, yes. All right, it's my understanding we're voting on A, correct? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Catch <laughs> Mrs. Raper? Yes. Okay. okay, item seven is the finance committee report with our treasurer, Mrs. Julie Camphouse. <laughs> Thank you, Madam President. We've learned on the cruise for silhouettes that we have dropped below the required 30 participants for the silhouettes cruise. Um, there's some upcoming dates that must be considered as we move forward. The second deposit is due tomorrow for the cruise. I'm not comfortable sending that money to the cruise company until we know for sure that we're going to hit our 30 uh, minimum, minimum for the 30 persons. If we must cancel the cruise, we need to do so by November 29th so that parents will get at least half of their first deposit back. If we cancel after the cutoff date, the parents will lose all of their uh, deposit. So how short are they? <clears throat> I'm not sure. Does this include band members that would be accompanying silhouettes at all? Or could we extend that invitation at all to to have band members accompany them musically or any any way we can help boost that number? Well, it, it's it's my understanding that it was performance. It's a performance cruise. So um, we still need a certain number of students to perform, um, but I think everybody's working hard to get it to work. I just, I was just trying to let you know my concerns on it. Mm -hmm. So we'll do our best to get um, to get that taken care of. Uh, in other news, PLK uh, Peter Kleekamp's company has purchased the old U.S. playing card facility uh, just yesterday. Currently, they are working on their initial asbestos surveys, which must which must come before all their work. Nick Ligenfelter would like to present to the board their current plans at our January committee meeting. So January? Yes. Okay. So we've penciled them in for that. On the agenda, the financials are attached for your approval this evening from October, as well as the middle school change order listing and the student enrollment summary. 7.02 is the appropriation resolution for our current year's budget. 7.03, a minute certificate. 7.04 is a five-year forecast and assumptions that are due to Ohio Department of Education by November 30th. 7.05 is a school safety grant. 7.06 is a resolution giving authorization to file a modified tax budget. 7.07 .07 is a pac van change order. 7.08 is some very nice donations. $7,000 from the Norwood Scholarship Foundation, $1,000 from the Creamy Whip near Sharpsburg. School Outfitters um, 
donated classroom equipment and supplies for the, what we were just talking about, these rooms, that equaled $10,603. And then Billy's Barbershop uh, donated $2,500 for silhouettes. 7.09, the transfer of abandoned funds. <coughs> 7.10, agreement with final forms. 7.11, agreement with St. Aloysius. 712, approval of then and now certificates. 7.13 is a Rachel Wixie contract. 7.14 is a Monsito agreement for software. And 7.15 is an advertising contract with Lamar Companies. And that is all that I have for finance, and that's enough. That was a lot. Thank you, Julie. I'd like to make a motion that we approve line item 7.01 through 7.15. I'll second. And I do have something I want to say. Go right ahead. All right, so what I want to highlight, um, two things. So um, previously, in, in years past, we used to do the um, five-year forecast in October and then again in May. And then that has, this year, that has changed to occur in November instead of October. So the five-year forecast is an incredibly critical and important document for our community. So um, we do have information on our website about how to read and look and understand a five-year forecast. And I just want to recommend that anybody who's concerned about school finance and you know what it's going to look like for the future, um, how does that compare with the past, to take a look at that document. Uh, the second thing that I want to bring up, if I may, is I want to highlight everybody's attention down to um, 7.09, which is the transfer of abandoned funds. Three of the items <coughs> on that list um, concerns previous graduated classes. So we're talking about the class of 2016, the class of 2017, and the class of 2018. While those kids were in high school, they raised money so that they could do something with it to benefit the school. You know, typically it's a class gift or, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll do something with that. And for these three classes, that has not occurred. So if anybody is watching this at home and they know who the class president is for 2016, 2017, or 2018, contact us. I don't want to see this money just rolled back into the general fund, right? I want to see, I want to see these kids do something with this money. I'd rather have them spend it the way that they want to spend it instead of rolling it into the general fund. And folks, if you know the person from the class of 2016, that abandoned fund account is $17,000. $17,000. That's a lot. It's it's a just, lot of money. And That's just so you understand, work. the general fund is not like our school's general fund. We cannot take those funds and then use it. <clears throat> this is, is like the state general fund, so we won't see those dollars. So if those students have something they would like to do to impact this school, these students, uh, make, a, make a mark for their class. Point, point that's of what order. this is doing. I don't think that's correct. I think it goes into the state fund, not no, our it, personal general fund. It's going to our general fund. And because the amounts are so very high, we've been working with Mrs. Akers to actually find out what that class wants to do. Okay. So we're going to move it to but the I general apologize. fund. I thought that went to the state general fund. No. Because okay. I know that's what happened with our last, uh, with something related to Oaks for monies geared for scholarships. It all went to the state. That's and I was worried we were losing that to the state as well. No, that's if we owe money to a certain person, like they don't cash a check or something. Okay. Then it goes to unclaimed funds. Mm -hmm. But this, we're going to do our best to make sure that the classes actually have say so on what they spend it on. Yeah. Even if it's and not. I apologize. That's, that's right. No, you're, I, you're, went. You're I was fine. very worried. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I just want those classes to to spend that money that yes. they raised. They're going to do something really neat with it. Yeah. So. And I think the pre class president of 2016 should let everyone else know what their secret was because that is very yeah. impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. It's a really impressive fundraising. Represents a lot of hard work. Right. So those were the items I wanted to highlight for today. So we have a uh, 7.01 through 7.15. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Orza? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Atwood? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Mrs. Raber? Yes. <clears throat> Item 8 would be hearing of the public, but we did not receive any, um, any 
paperwork. Uh, so there's no hearing of the public this evening. Item nine is reports. And we'll begin with board announcements. And if I may just highlight the great work that's been being done in our performing arts departments this mm -hmm. week. Yes. Um, the Sound of Music was last weekend. It was fantastic. I think I see a cast member up there. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, so just, just absolute fabulous work on the part of the directors and the cast. Um, Mrs. Marshall also had her uh, fall concert for the middle school and high school. That was also wonderful. And then this weekend, the Silhouettes have their fall showcase. So it's a busy week for fine arts and um, just lots of wonderful things going on for our kids. And our community is always welcome to attend those events and support the kids in their endeavors. Do they Any have one more show on Saturday? The mm -hmm. Sound of Music? No. 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 Oh, I thought they were just doing Just the Silhouettes. Yeah, just the Silhouettes. silhouettes. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I do have an announcement that I'd like to make. Um, so uh, some of you folks may be familiar with the group um, that's local here, uh, ASAP Norwood. They work a lot with prevention of drug use and, and education in the community. Um, at the Oaks this past week, we did have a couple of guests come from the American Heart Association, and they work with Interact for Health, and that's a group that ASAP works closely with as well. Um, coming up on December 3rd, from 5.30 to 7.30, they're hosting a community hub meeting um, at the Greater Cincinnati Foundation on Pete Rose Way. I've shared the information online. I've shared it through ASAP Norwood as well. Um, if you are interested in attending, it is free. It's open to the public. And it's a, it's a dialogue that's going to be based on educating the public in regards to e-cigarettes and how they have kind of suddenly impacted students and how they're being marketed, what they're doing for health initiatives in your community. And if you have questions about you know, how this may affect your children or your family members, I encourage you to go to that meeting. Um, it, it is through St. Elizabeth Healthcare. UC is gonna be there. So many experts on this topic will be present um, to give you lots of information on, on that new product. So I just wanted to put that out there again, December 3rd, 5.30 to 7.30 on Pete Rose Way. And you can get more information at Interact for Health on Facebook. Any other board announcements? No. Is John Peter here? Is he not? John, thank you. I saw you this weekend, uh, Saturday morning, every time I was parked at the intersection of Sharpsburg. We were so busy. Your crew was hard at work, and you just did that whole move from the 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 big building to little. That's what I call it. The big building to the little building. Uh, but I, I know it was a lot of a lot of work, and so thank you for taking care of that. It went very smoothly. Okay, well, we'll move on to the superintendent's report with Mrs. Rooney. I have two items I would like to talk about. Uh, the first grade students at Sharpsburg Primary were treated to a visit and book signing by author and illustrator mm -hmm. Lauren Long. Mr. Long has spoken and presented on his works nationally. He has illustrated for Madonna and also President Obama chose him to illustrate the book dedicated to his daughters. He also has written Otis the Tractor series, and it's 10 years old. So Mrs. Eads decided to throw a birthday party for Otis and had cake for Otis, and Mr. Long was so wonderful. Um, he read to the students, and then Mrs. Eads and the principal and some of her friends and family purchased 52 books for all the first graders and Mr. Long personally signed them and talked to the children and they were just so excited to have gotten a brand new book. So it was really exciting. And I have a second report and it's about the wonderful Veterans Day celebration that Norwood View hosted. And there mm. were 36 veterans there during the celebration. You know, they walked through the halls, the students cheered, waved flags, and then there's this assembly where the students sing songs. And decorated war veteran Colonel Paul Kramer was the special guest speaker. And the school raised $715 to support the Yellow Ribbon Support Center. So it's a lovely way to honor our veterans. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mrs. Ronan. Item 9.03 is the Avenues for Success report, of which I have none. Item 9.04 is the Legislative Report with Mrs. Sally Rayburn. Thank you. So um, 
There have been many um, House and Senate bills uh, proposed in the last uh, month or so, so I just picked a few to highlight um, ones that would possibly um, affect us most if, uh, if they were passed. Um, first one is Senate Bill uh, 218 that would, um, if passed, would prohibit public schools from starting prior to 8.30 a.m. Um, and then House Bill uh, 398 that would establish Election Day as a legal holiday, which would then um, provide paid leave to public school employees as well as other government employees. Um, and then House Bill 375, which um, would permit a refundable income tax credit equal to the amount of an extracurricular activity fee paid by or on behalf of a low income public school student. And that concludes my report. I think we'll all be watching that 8.30 start yes. time. Yes. <laughs> <Very close. laughs> Item 10 is meeting notification 10.01 being the approval of future meetings. So we have scheduled so far the committee meeting um, on Tuesday, December 10th at the Board of Education office at 2132 Williams Ave and our regular board meeting here in the high school on Thursday, December 19th. Could I get a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve those dates. I'll yes. second. And I do want to comment. So um, the committee meeting on December 10th, I will most definitely be out of the country on that date. Um, I'll be in China. If we can possibly move that to the previous week, I know Amber cannot do the third but if we could do the second. Um, I, that is my volunteer day with Ronald McDonald House unless we can do it earlier, like at four o'clock. I can't uh, do the second. You can't do it. So okay. why don't we just leave the dates the same and I'll just miss that committee meeting. Would you want to have the committee meeting earlier in the week, the same week? I'm gonna be out the eighth through the 12th. I mean the same week of like Monday or Tuesday like 16th or 17th. Oh. That way we can at least have an opportunity to discuss items that are going to be voted on later that week. So um, we do have some time before we have to make a public announcement. Why don't we just kind of see how the month is going to shape up. If, if it's the end of the year and there's really not anything pressing on the agenda for December, I'm okay with just missing that committee meeting. But if there's something really pressing that, you know, would would require my input I'm not saying i'm the most important person or anything but <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying that that if i miss it i'm okay with it unless there's really something important that we're going to be discussing right now it's a very light agenda but okay you know something could change right and i will uh, i would like to remind the board that um the january organization meeting must be held before the 15th of the month so I'm proposing that we do the, the organizational meeting on January 7th, which is the same date as our committee meeting. Right, yeah. So just keep that day open. So we just do it like right, right beforehand? Before. We'll do it a half hour before, yes. Like, uh, five o'clock that day? Okay. So I'm that, gonna change it right so now. So the committee meeting is on the 7th, but that's the first Tuesday. Yes, and the it's because Usually it's the third Thursday and the Tuesday before. Oh, I see. Follow your calendar as third Thursday. This screwed okay. with me the last time. <laughs> start with third, third Thursday, Thursday, Thursday and count backwards okay. a week. I got well, burned also. That's the only way I can help. So you that is then the day. So are you not here the seventh? Yeah. <coughs> I mean, I could come late on the seventh. Probably. Well, it's well. The coming late on the seventh is going to be a problem because the organization meeting is where we, we can appoint. Do it at the end. No, we have to do that before because you will have. You'll have a first. That's meeting. right. It's the first meeting. meeting. We'll, we'll have the president pro tem, and then we'll nominate for mm -hmm. the person who's going to run the meetings for the next year. Right. Gotcha. Okay. So, but we don't have to do it. I mean, if if the if if we need to change the committee and the organizational to two different days, we can. They don't have to be on the same day. It's just the organization has to be the first meeting. It has to be the first meeting. When are you gone? I 
I have a mandatory work meeting I have to be at from like four to six. So what if we just started the meeting later so we could still do it first and she could get here after her training? Instead of starting at five, we could start at like 6.30 or seven to give you time to arrive. Yeah, I could, that, that would be fine. still do it that day, but just start a little bit later. If, if that's, I mean, just keep in mind that Julie lives 10 hours away. That's why I'm proposing, <laughs> just in not case. Not quite that far. <laughs> Pretty close, but not. <laughs> I'm just saying I'm flexible with starting a little bit later if she yeah. needs to. Well, that one's two months away, so we can talk about that when okay. um, yeah. we can plan that out. All right, so we have a motion on the floor. Yes. And a second. To keep the tent. To keep the tent. Okay. Mrs. Warza? Yes. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. Mrs. Raber? Yes. Okay, there are no items removed for separate consideration. That brings us to adjournment. Could I get a motion to adjourn, please? I will motion. I will second. Mrs. Warza? Yes. Mr. Atwood? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mrs. Raper? Yes.